One of my top suggestions for a while now has been to try to make some sort of accurate gun in Besiege, and I thought that it could be cool to make a sniper with a working scope. Before I do that though, I'm gonna awkwardly break up the video to announce my brand new Besiege competition. In two days, I'll be dropping the full rule set in my Discord server, but if you're at all interested in planes, this contest is for you. There'll also be community voting on all the submissions, so even if you don't want to directly participate, I would highly recommend joining. I may have even pulled some strings, and by using the link below, Besiege will be 50% off for the duration of the competition. In fact, I've hidden three free codes in this video in various places, so good luck finding them. But starting out in the sandbox here, you can see the first thing I'm doing is starting to put down some wood, and after I pin down a place, I put down a bomb. Now after that, I also put down a half pipe here, and you can see now I can blow up the bomb. Now this is a very basic setup here, so I get to start testing bullets out, and you can see now I'm actually going to start by trying to use a wood piece. Now because I'm trying to make a sniper, I want this to be as accurate as possible, and you can see shooting this off, it's not too bad, although it doesn't really go that far. Now one thing I was thinking here to help stabilize the bullet was to add on some wing panels. And you can see I got two of those in place, and it sort of seemed to work. You can see it does start to go forward, although it does slow down quite a bit towards the end of its flight. Now this wasn't too bad, but I was thinking that if I replace the wood piece with a ballast, I might be able to make the whole thing a lot more compact and hopefully go a bit further. Trying this out, it was a little more chaotic, which wasn't exactly great, so after adding on a few more ballasts here, this gave me similar results to before, but I realized what I could do here was get rid of the wing panels and and add in propellers instead. Now these do fundamentally the same thing, except they have very little drag, so they shouldn't let me go a lot further. And you can see already, just trying this out now, it seemed to be going quite a bit better. It was a little unstable at the end there, but trying it again, it seemed to go super straight, and that looked great. Now here, I even doubled the amount of propellers I had, and try this out again, it seemed like the propellers were so strong, they were actually causing a bit of trouble. Now I went ahead and I deleted the two ballasts in the front, and trying this out now, it seemed to just freak out, and then immediately start falling into the ground. Now part of that problem appeared to be that the propellers were actually pulling away from the ballast really far and this caused them to glitch out. Now I tried increasing the mass of the ballast to two times to see if this would solve anything and that seemed to cause more trouble but going down to one time speed immediately here it just started to work. You can see already this thing is going almost perfectly straight as it travels and it only stops once all the propellers burn off. And I had to try this again here and once I did this it still seemed to be going super straight. In fact, this thing went all the way to the world border and didn't deviate at all. Now this was exactly what I was looking for and I figured this should work awesome when I'm trying to make a full bullet. Now of course, I got rid of the bomb and I turned off on breaking mode and I was gonna need a different way to push this out of the barrel. One thing I was thinking here was using a water cannon and trying this out now, it does push it around so that's at least a decent start. Now I tried moving up the barrel in the ballast and after that, I copied down a ton of water cannons for even more power. Now this proved to be a reasonably bad idea here, so I went ahead and I replaced the block it was sitting on with a ballast. Now by doing that, I could set its mass to be a lot higher and once I do this, and we will fire off the bullet and it seems to go reasonably far. Now it did seem to be speed capped here at about 74 meters per second and that just wasn't all that fast. Now of course here I kind of went crazy went for 20 times cannon power and this was a bit much but it did get me up to a reasonable speed here but I really didn't like that I had to use cheats here and also it was pretty inconsistent and was firing in a bunch of random directions rather than just going straight. Now next up here see I moved up the bullet and I was thinking of a much simpler design. This time, just by having a wheel on the front and the back, ideally I'll be able to spin up the ballast and make it gain a bunch of speed. This didn't exactly work though, and it seemed like the ballast was kind of going wherever it wanted to. Now I even tried adding on some braces here to get some more resistance against the air, but this just didn't seem to do anything, and honestly this just wasn't that impressive. Now another propulsion system that I thought of using was springs. Springs should give me quite a bit of power, and you can see now I seem to pull it over pretty well, and ideally I'll be able to use this to fling it away. To do that, that though, first I was gonna need a decoupler, and this is gonna let me detach the ballast from the spring and fling it where I want it to go. Now eventually here, I released it pretty early and it only got up to about 150 meters per second, and with this, it did fly away pretty well. Now taking a closer look here, you can see as it pulls in, how all the propeller blades sort of fly away from the ballast and cause it a lot of trouble. Now one improvement that I thought of here was gonna be adding a second attachment point for springs, and by doing this, I can have the ballast go right through the middle, and that means that I won't hit into any wood as I fire it away. Now, of course, trying this out, it was significantly better than before, and at 360 meters per second, I was able to fly all the way into the border wall. Now, I went back to my water cannon idea next here, and I was curious to see if I could use a chain of them to get up to an even better speed. This didn't really happen, though, and I sort of slowly started moving
moving forward. Now at this point though, I had realized that a cannon might not be a bad way to go. It is a little more inconsistent than springs, but it does have quite a bit of power and I'm able to easily turn it anywhere I want. Now you can see here, I'm able to shoot that ballast and I get up to a pretty reasonable speed, about 130 meters per second, and that's really not that bad. Now the other great thing about the cannon is that it was super consistent. Every time I shot it, it seemed to deviate only slightly to the right. Now I figured that as long as that I could account for that slight deviation, I should be able to hit the same target every single time. Now I made a few small adjustments to the barrel to make it even easier for this thing to get out, but overall this was looking great. I did want to give this an actual accuracy test though, so you can see now I loaded into the populated sandbox world, and with that I wanted to try shooting a balloon. This wasn't the balloon I was aiming for, but at the very least it does have the power to get right through it, so that's exactly what I wanted to see. Now at this point with the bullet looking pretty good, next up I wanted to work on the scope. Now to do this, I was going to use a distance sensor, and you see here I'm setting its range to 500 times. Now once I do this, you see here testing it out, it seems to flicker on and off a bit, and I think that's because it's seeing the balloon way off in the distance. Now to get a more full picture, what I wanted to do is copy on more sensors, and you can see here I created a nice little row of these. But of course, to get a more full picture, I wanted to add on more layers of these and see how that would do. At first here, it was a little glitchy, so with another try, everything seemed to be a bit better, and this should do the trick. Now of course though, I am going to need some sort of display, and for that, what I wanted to do is build up a little wooden log here, and on that, you can see I'm putting down some steering hinges. After putting this in place, you can see here I'm manually able to move one of these up and down, and I should have these tied into the sensors so that if they see something in front of them, they'll flip down, and that should be represented. Once I did that, you can see it's starting to somewhat take shape, but there's just not enough sensors here to really paint a full image. So after all that, I copied on some more sensors here, and given this a quick look, you can see the balloon move up and down as those lights turn on, and in these steering hinges, you sort of could start to see that same picture taking shape. Now I copied way more of these on here, and with all that done, I'm starting to get more of a full picture. It was still fairly spread apart though, and the image was not very well defined. So what I did next is actually shrunk down these sensors to get them even closer together. Now I figured that an 8x7 image would be good enough to sort of get the gist of what was going on, and you can see here trying it out, the balloon actually starts to rise in that bottom left corner, and it's pretty clear to see where it is. Now I also built up a bit of a backing on this to make it a little bit easier to see what was going on, and with all that stretched up in place here, I wanted to give it a test, but just to be sure it was working, I wanted to move it super close to the balloon so it'd be right in front of it. With this, you can clearly see it moving up and down, and you can see the image being represented over on the right. Now of course, this seemed to be working perfectly, so I moved it further away here, and with that, I wanted to try shooting the balloon in the distance. Now I did have it pretty well lined up, but overall, it did seem to see it fine, and as soon as I shot the balloon, all of the sensors turned off. Now that was exactly what I was looking for, and with all this done, now I wanted to figure out a way to be able to move it around. Now starting out here, I put down a couple of steering hinges, and I deleted off all the pins. Once I did that, it was a little loose, so I had to use some braces to hold it all together, and after getting it connected up to these steering hinges on the bottom and the top here, I was able to move it back and forth relatively well, at the very least, I was able to start getting some images as I moved. Now to get this whole thing a bit more compact, I put the screen right behind the sensors, and with that done, I also had some minor bracing issues, so I just made sure to fix those here, and with all that, gave it another test now, and everything seemed to be working relatively well. Now see here, I'm turning my attention back over to the cannon on the bottom, and this is so I could start working on a system to hold onto the bullet. Now just by adding in this grabber, it already seemed to be having some pretty major problems here, and it was shooting way off to the right. Now to fix that, I tried moving the cannon in a bit closer, and this did seem to help out a bit, but the shots were still relatively inconsistent, and it was shooting way up in the air now. Now I was hoping I could iron that out later, but for now, I wanted to try encapsulating this entire thing in wood panels, and once I got that basic shape built, you can see here I started to round it off. Now this is roughly going to start working like a casing here, and while it was loosely on there, it did seem to let the bullet come out relatively well at first, so this was a good sign. Things immediately started to get bad though, the moment I tried to rest the bullet on a half pipe. Once I got rid of all of my pins, it just stopped working entirely, and the bullet was super loose, and the ballast wasn't even coming out of it anymore. So with this not really working, I went ahead, I deleted off a bunch of the stuff on the bottom, and I wanted to try again with my spring mechanism. Now I still wasn't convinced it was going to be super accurate, but I didn't want to give it a try, and I figured maybe if I limited the speed, it might be able to do something. So here, after getting the springs attached, I gave it a test, and it was a little loose at first, so everything seemed to just come towards itself. But after adding on a couple pins here, I gave it another test, and it seemed to be quite a bit better. Now for some extra consistency here, I also 
also wanted to pull away the part the decoupler is attached to, and to do that, I added on another spring on top of my ballast that I had before. What this is going to do is quickly pull up that ballast at the last second and make sure that my actual bullet isn't going to run into it. Now, it shot a little bit higher up than I was hoping for, but it did seem to work on this first test, but trying it out again, it was going a lot more straight. Now, I figured that this inaccuracy was probably on me, and if I add in some timers, it should be able to automate the process. Now, I quickly just set up all those timings here, and you can see I was able to shoot that off really fast. The problem, though, is that it still had that inconsistency built in, and it wasn't going in just one direction. The other thing, though, is that if it's this inconsistent now, the moment I try to take it off all of these pins, it's gonna get so much worse. And just adding in some braces here, it was already way more inconsistent and started shooting down. So at this point, I just cut my losses and went back to the cannon system, and I wanted to try making it semi-reloadable. You can see now, I added in three ballasts here, and once I did that, I added in three grabbers. Now, one minor problem is that the cannon does like to fly off the back, but if I turn on a braking for a quick second here, you can see I should be able to make this all work. Now, the direction all the ballasts are going aren't exactly perfectly straight, and I wasn't super in love with that, but at the very least, there always seemed to be one that went almost perfectly where I wanted it to. Now, I also can't leave unbraking mode on, so to fix that, I wanted to add in a wheel to the back here, and you can see I'm adding on some arms and some cannons. These cannons are going to rotate around up into the barrel and shoot off whatever ballast is in front. Now, trying this out here, they did all shoot, but they kind of went back really fast. So after giving them individual keybinds here, you can see I'm able to shoot them off and start to rotate up the next cannon. Now, they were breaking immediately as soon as they reached the half pipe, and I was going to need a way to be able to get in there. Now, that was an easy enough solution. I decided in a couple of pistons, and by doing that, I'm able to stretch it over the top and get it to fit where I need. The accuracy was still just not quite what I wanted it to be, though, and it was deviating quite a bit to the left and the right. Now, I wanted to see how this would do on the ground, so you can see next here, I started bracing everything together, and I also added in some legs. These are actually going to be sitting on the ground here, and trying to move it around now, I wanted to give it a shot and see what it would do. Now, my first shot here ended up being absolutely perfect. I hit right into that cube, which is exactly what I was aiming for. The next few shots, though, were a little rough. Every single one of them seemed to just go off in a random direction and not really even go remotely straight. I even had a few like this one that would just jump straight out of the barrel and then hit right into the ground. And while this reloading system does work, my main priority on this build is to get things to go as straight as possible, and to do that, I decided just to go with the single shot for now. I figured that I could keep the other mechanism I built, though, and I'll just make it a second variation of this design. Now, while I was talking about all that, you can see I added on a wheel here, and this lets me move around the half pipe. By doing this, I should be able to shoot the ballast straight forward, but it was deviating a little bit. This was an easy enough solution, though, because I had actually realized I deleted one of these logs on top of the barrel. This log was helping to guide it out straight forward, and once I did that, it was going up a little bit, but it was also going dead straight, which is exactly what I wanted. But with this all ready to go now, what I wanted to do is add on some wood pieces to the front and start working on the actual structure. Now, this is probably one of the more fun parts of the build, and you can see now I'm starting to use some wood panels to encapsulate the whole thing. There were a few little things still left to do though, so after moving everything further forward here, it did seem to be a bit better, and I was able to move this back and forth. Now I went ahead here and I shook down this as much as I could, and with that, I wanted to start working on the barrel. Now for this, I started out with a very basic structure, just like I've had before, and after I did that, I extended it out way further forward, I turned it into glass, and then it made it into a circle. And with all that, I gave it a test here, but it was a little heavy at first, so with one extra brace, it was holding together, but it was sagging quite a bit. You can see now, as I try to shoot, the bullet goes straight into the barrel and instantly just shatters it. Now, to fix that, I added on another wheel way further up, and this seemed to improve the stability quite a bit. Once I shrunk the barrel a little bit more, it seemed to come out just fine, and overall, this is looking a lot better. So, at the front of the gun looking mostly good here, I wanted to start working on the back, and for that, you can see I built up a nice little cylinder. And finally, with all that, I finished up the stock here. But after adding all those on, it was a little heavy and just instantly managed to shatter the gun. Fortunately, I was able to turn off collision on all the panels, and this did seem to make them light enough to be able to hold it all together. So for some of those final touches here, I finished up with the trigger guard and the trigger, and you can see I actually pulled the screen further off away from the sensors again. That was so I could build up a scope here, and you can see with all that in place, it honestly doesn't look too bad. Now to finish this all off here, I also want to make the whole thing gray, and you can see with that, it's the final gun. Now for one test here, I wanted to try shooting the balloon, and you can see now getting into my scope, and once I had that found, I tried shooting, and with all that, I was able to hit it and actually pop it. Now, not every test went super smooth.
smooth. In fact, this thing was fairly inconsistent, but the reason that the shooting system was better than all of the other ones I tested was at the very least it occasionally would go dead straight. This meant that as long as I tried it at least three or four times, it would definitely go in about the right direction, and it was pretty much the best I could ask for for an actually accurate gun in the siege. So guys, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any ideas for future builds, make sure to leave those down in the comments below, and otherwise, till next time.